Here's a video that might be helpful for anyone who's planning on remodeling a balloon framed building. This would be a building with balloon framed walls like the ones you are going to be taking a look at here. Let's go ahead and remove the back walls for better viewing. Take a look at how you might frame a door in a window. Um, a lot of times you're going to have a header go past on this type of framing. And I say that, but uh, that might not be the situation where you're dealing with. But if you are remodeling something, this is probably going to be the way to do it. Have the headers go in between the existing wall framing studs. And then of course, you would need to cut the um, tops or bottoms to make the headers fit in there also. Don't forget single trimmers on windows less than five feet, double trimmers. Um, two on each side on windows more than five feet wide. Now this one here would have a double trimmer simply for nailing. Um, it's hard if I just had a single stud here and I put my door jam in, door frame, I go to trim it out, um, I might not, might have a problem doing that. But you can do it if you got to put a light switch in there, put one stud in there, that would be no problem. Um, here's a window with the header extending past and the trimmers with the sill and then of course a full length trimmer here just kind of giving you an idea of how some of this stuff can can be framed header window sill um, studs in between this the header of course would be supporting the weight of the floor here this section of the floor top view common framing here i just put a block i'm kind of throwing a few different methods out there to give you an idea i don't want to just have each window framing um, section the same otherwise you're going to be uh, you won't be able to see as many options so this right here you can see where the stud just simply goes underneath the floor joist to support it and this this um header could have went through also you could have ran the header to here and then put a block in between the header and the framing joist or the floor joist also let's go ahead and pretend like we moved the window over and uh, like i said this uh, video is just giving you some ideas on possibilities things you can use um, but of course it might not work or you might need to use a combination of these um, methods that I'm showing you here. So let's go ahead and if you remember the window stacked up in the last uh, illustrations and this one here we're just simply moving it over. I went ahead and tried to make do something a little different here. Uh, these studs here, the ones that are kind of look like OSB studs, they were the ones that were cut and uh, these are the ones that would be installed new. So window is over. Take a look at the bottom here. We can see where this one here goes through. Sometimes you can take and turn the studs. You know, you can put the stud, let's say you slip it in before you put the um, window sill, the window sill framing plate in. You can drop the studs in at an angle and then turn them and uh, get them to fit in here. If not, you might need to just simply notch these studs down and around and have them sit on top of the header. And that notch can go up higher. If you think you're going to have a problem, um, it could run up higher and uh, it, this should give you enough support for the window. And right here we have a we have the existing stud that went underneath the window sill that we moved and you can simply nail another stud to it nail a stud in here and if you want you can put another board in here or you can double it up run one on the other side in down full length for more strength but i think you're going to have enough strength between this right here and this right here so one should be enough there and here you can see the pocket where the existing header was the new framing studs and then of course the window header moved another view of it there and um, like I had a block in the other one. I believe I had a block in the other one. You can simply nail a block on if you don't want to run a full length um, jack stud or a cripple all the way down. Then um, sometimes a block will do just fine. I've used these plenty of times, especially when you're, you know, eight or nine inches away from another stud. So again, these were the studs that were cut. These were the new studs that were installed.
Let's take a look at framing a larger opening and uh, start with the bottom. Now here's something you can also do. Um, put a 4x4 in or a 2x4. I will leave that up to you for what type of support. You can see here we're a 4x4. You're going to be supporting a little bit of a load with a double trimmer. It's going to be supporting the header above and all of the weight that's on the roof. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put something a little larger in here like a 4x4 and uh, this will distribute the weight to the floor joist. And uh, something like this usually works pretty good. Um, this right here, you can simply drop a two by four down here. And I've done this before, something like this, where I don't uh, really nail it. I just simply drop it down and um, put a couple of nails at the top and then put my trimmer and the weight kind of holds it together. You know, what's it going to do? Move over a little bit? Um, maybe, you know, but uh, it usually works. But you can see here where the weight is transferring. Whatever would be on top of this header is transferring down to here where you might want a little more support. On this one down here, we have our double trimmers. And this trimmer, of course, runs past. This one's sitting on top of this uh, lower header already and then the block right here really isn't doing much but it is providing us with a little support there. Another view of the window again double trimmers if the window is wider than five feet five feet or wider. Here's the block I was saying you know before you install this right here simply drop block down there and um, then you can finish framing it here, and this gives you a little more support. Another view over here. Again, these were the walls. These were the studs that were cut, the existing studs, and uh, simply cut it back. Could you leave this one, you know, and cut it up here underneath the sill? Probably that would be fine because this is where the weight is going to be carrying. So if you ran this one all the way up and then ran this across and just butted into here, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Even if you're going to put another stud in over here, you needed something like that. And that's why I'm kind of throwing this, this out there, give you an idea of different methods. You might use a combination of them in your project. Now here, I just wanted to do something a little different. We have the 4x4 here, but we have full length trimmers. We don't have the sill running across like we did in the other illustration. And then of course there's no 2x4 here. This one just simply runs down and sits on top of the header also. So double trimmers, full length floating trimmer, two full length trimmers. And again this could have also been a floating trimmer. The sill could have ran over to right here and you still would have had your double trimmers. Another view down here, the trimmers, of course, uh, and the um, studs are sitting on top of the block, all of them. And of course here we just simply notched this one around the ribbon. So this is what I was saying, you know, again, combination of these, you might need to do a few, few of these. You know, are you going, am I suggesting that you run a two by four all the way down um, let's see if I can pan out here. Um, hold on. You know, am I suggesting that, you know, if you have your two by fours in here that you need to run a two by four all the way down? No. And uh, this will be explained in the next section why. If you have a floor that is... Um, basically an engineered floor. You know, you might actually have a floor if it's an older home that uh, you might, this information that I'm about to share with you won't apply, but if you had something that was sheeted with plywood, something that was a structurally sound floor, even if it was um, solid sheeting, one by six diagonal, that would qualify as a solid um, plane. Basically what you have here is a solid plane, just like you have with the concrete floor. And I don't want to say just like it, but kind of gives you an idea. You just raise a giant square um, engineered box up here that supports everything. And this allows us to cut um, the wall stud. So let's just say that um, I had some damage or I wanted to frame a different window. You can simply cut the studs 
because all of the framing on the floor is providing you with the strength you need. It's not like it's going to give you a hinge point. Uh, if you need more information on that, go take a look at, I believe I have a video on that. Um, simply type it into uh, YouTube to find it. But uh, this one here, you simply cut the studs and you can cut them all the way across. If you have damaged studs you need to replace, and this is kind of what I was saying, you don't need to run these studs all the way down. If they're damaged and need to re be replaced, that's different. But uh, if you're looking to repair a section above or below or frame a window in, you know what, you don't want to deal with the way all, all the other methods I was showing you. Simply cut the studs at the bottom, put your plate uh, framing plate down. You might want to double it up and uh, frame it like you would normally, a normal window kind of a thing. And if you had damage below, you could simply do something like this. And again, you could do something like this and uh, frame a window or a door um, how you would on uh, regular platform type framing. So this right here would be okay in most cases. I say that again. Remember, I'm not an engineer. I'm just kind of providing you with uh, stuff I've done in the past or stuff that I'm pretty sure would work and it would work okay. So... This right here would be just like platform framing where you frame a wall and the wall is now supporting the joist, not the ribbon. Um, and the wall studs, of course, below would be. So, and you can see, you know, this is basically the floor is tied to the blocks, it's tied to the joist, it's creating a nice strong structure that allows you to cut some of this stuff and make the modifications that you need. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave the questions in the comment area or email them to me. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for the kind comments that I received for the last video I made on what is balloon framing. I think it was the most comments I actually received in one day on uh, one particular video. So thanks.